Hello and welcome to another Final Cut Pro 10 tutorial. This will be the first advanced tutorial they have been requested, so here it is. Um, just to answer a few questions first, you'll notice that the fan noise in the background is gone. Uh, that wasn't my actual laptop, that was in fact a fan stand I had on underneath that every now and then I, f I was forgetting to turn off before I recorded my tutorial. Um, I'm actually running a i7 MacBook Pro, one of the latest ones, um, and it's plugged into a 24-inch monitor, so that's why I've got far more uh, screen size. Now, in this tutorial, we're going to be creating a muzzle flash, but using only the built-in tools of Final Cut Pro 10. So let's just take a quick look at what we're creating. Okay, so pretty cool. You can see that we've got some actual blowback on the gun. We've got the flare coming out with some glow, and we've also got some light hitting the uh, hitting the tree and hitting the guy's face, which is also quite nice. Um, and like I said, this is using only the built-in effects and generators inside of Final Cut Pro 10, so it's not going to cost you a penny. Now, if you want to follow along in this tutorial, this piece of footage is actually from videocopilot.net if you go over to tutorials number 28 realistic gun blowback just go ahead and download the project file and that is just this video footage that tells you how to create a gun flash um, muzzle flash inside of Adobe After Effects um, however we're going to be doing it straight in our editing software which means we don't have to send our footage anywhere else and then we can collapse it all into a compound clip when we're done so uh, let's go ahead and get started. I'm just going to clear my uh, timeline here. And over in our events browser, you can see we've got our footage. We've just dragged it in. It's just called blowback. We can quickly skim through and see what we've got. So we've just got someone just jerking on the gun and, uh, well, pulling it back, simulating some kind of um, attack. So we're just going to, we just want the whole clip. We can drag that down into our timeline. You can see that it's going to give us some options. Do we want to change the timeline settings to this? Uh, we're going to press yes. Um, why? Because we want um, we don't want it to have it to keep on encoding the footage. Now I'm just going to quickly transform the footage because you can see we've actually got some kind of a black border going on here, which isn't what you want. And let's just scale this up. And there you go. That's fixed that problem. Um, so the first thing we want to do is line up where we think this is going to be so it's it's either here or here we're going to go here this time I went the frame before now I'm actually just going to use the blade tool to grab this just this frame so that I know that this is the frame um, that we're working with now the first thing we want to do is just create the rough muzzle flash area now the way we're going to do that is if we go over here to video generator browsers and um, you can see that we've got some sh um, stuff here now what we want is the elements go over to elements and grab the shape we're just going to drag that into our timeline over the top here press b for the blade tool and we can just delete the rest of that tail and in here we've now got a lovely circle shape um so i think that's pretty good we're just going to leave it at that and that is our muzzle flash done <sighs> We're going to go into the inspector panel. You can see in the generator settings we can uh, change the edge color to white. We're actually just going to reduce the outline. Get rid of that. White's okay. You might want to tint it slightly yellow, but the trouble is the more you tint it, the less white it has, like the less bright it is. So we're going to maybe tint it a tiny bit. You won't even notice. So just just make it white basically. And then in the shapes, we're going to change it to an arrow. We uh we, we like this arrow, but it's it's not really the uh, best arrow in the world. Uh, we're just going to transform it. Dun, 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 dun. Now, if you're watching so far, you're probably thinking, what on earth is this guy on? How can you possibly turn an arrow into a muzzle flash? Which, fair point. Um, I have no idea either. What we're going to do is, over in here in the generator section, you can see that there's a roundness option. Now, the more we play with this, you can see we're starting to get this kind of... It's So, about 23, you can see we're starting to get a shape that could represent a muzzle flash. Maybe not, but it could do. And we're going to press done. And then we're going to go into the distort effects. 
and we can warp it around a little bit. What we're going to do is grab in these corners so we create a bit more of a, uh, you can see, so it's going to fan out a little bit more. Like that. Now this muzzle flash is obviously going to go off the screen, but you, you get the idea. And you don't want it to line up exactly with the end of the gun. If you look in films, muzzle flashes don't really touch the barrel, they're literally just beyond it, so about there's good. And as you can see it's only for one frame that you actually want this. Now the next thing we're going to do is right click and press new compound clip. Now the reason we do that is because now any filters we apply aren't just going to be to inside this shape, it's actually going to be to the whole area. Um, now that may mean nothing to you yet but when we start adding effects it's really clear so the first effect we're going to add is the directional blur we're just going to drag it onto our clip and we just can click in um, if we just click here to turn off the transform settings um, by the way if you're not used to these tools check out my tutorial on the uh, transform crop and distort tools um, that is the name of the tutorial I believe um, but in here we're going to go ahead and you can see we've got an arrow and we've got a uh, circle and the f harder we pull on this arrow the bigger the circle gets now basically the bigger the circle the more directional blur and you can see it affecting there and the way the arrow is pointing that is the uh, the direction of the blur so about there is kind of cool you can see that we might even want to move this layer down a little bit maybe about there's looking kinda cool now the next thing we want to do is add some color now I was playing around with color trying to get a good effect and then I thought you know what let's try some of the presets and the one that works best is in fact the desert glare and you can see if we just scrub over this effect here you can see it previewed on the uh, layer and you can see we're actually starting to get some red edges which is the kind of effect we want on our blowback and you can see now really quickly we've actually created something pretty cool and we're just going to move this layer a little bit so that it lines up a little bit better uh, about there You can just drag on these in the uh, inspector panel to get a bit more control. And now we're starting to get something nice. Now what you may want to do is just decrease the opacity a little bit or even change the blend mode to screen. Um, but obviously then you need to boost some of the reds back into it. Overlay looks rubbish, don't do that. Maybe screen. But I would, like I said, just dip the opacity a little bit like that just so you can see through it a little bit just make it a little bit more realistic now the next thing we want to do is to duplicate the layer so we're just going to press command C and then command V and you can see it's going to paste it above it's just going to paste it wherever our cursor was but the magnetic timeline means that it's just going to move stuff out of the way if need be um, first of all I want to collapse what we've got um, so we're going to break apart clip items so it's going to give us the original footage back and the reason being is I'm going to distort it so that we've got less of this pointy bit and more of an actual shape like that. We're going to move it again and then we're going to put it back into a compound clip so that we can add our effects again. We can actually go into this footage and press command C and then when we right click well, if we go into edit, you can see that you can paste the effects. Um, and basically that means we've copied the effects from this clip, because we just press Command C to copy it, and we can paste the effects. Paste the effects, and you can see um, it's chain. It's now given it the desert glare, and it's given it the blur and everything. But on this layer on top, we actually want far more blur. The reason this is actually sort of like our blurry intense layer and if we go into the color correction of this layer we actually want to make it a little bit 
more red. Yeah. Like that. And maybe even move it. like that but obviously because this is bigger it's a bit more in your face you want to dip the opacity on this layer even more it's kind of like when you get that outer bit on a lightsaber like the outer glow we're kind of creating that bit of the effect if we press V just to uh, make the layer disappear you can see what it's doing just giving it a bit more realism in there now the next thing we want to do is create uh, some light on his face. Now there's a few ways to do this, but the best way is just to duplicate the original footage, Command C, Command V. Um, we're just going to drag it up here, behind, underneath, oh. underneath the uh, the lens flares. Drag it out for two frames, and basically we're just going to animate the opacity. So make sure we're hovering over the first frame, and set a keyframe here, and go to the second frame, and reduce the opacity to about 40%. Oh, sorry. Add a keyframe on the first frame, and there you go. Um, now obviously you can't actually see anything happening, but basically what we've got is the same bit of footage here that's on the... Uh, bottom timeline but also here for two frames and it starts here and then it fades out and with that basically what that means is that means we can brighten this footage and then the brightness is going to fade out over a frame 